Hi, everyone. Um, so, as I said, you are here because you're about to write a thesis for your master, and you are probably wondering how you do that, because no one explained you in this uh, academy. So we'll talk about this today. We'll try to go step by step and uh, we'll see how it goes, and if you have questions, we'll discuss that, that at the end. Um, okay, so first we'll talk about your master, then what is it about, what it should look like uh, in the detail of page by page, then uh, all the academic details of what you have to do, what's the protocol, and all of this, and also then talk about the presentation and how you are uh, graded on, on this presentation. Um, okay, so, so far, this you should know about. You have a third of the master, which is about your research, and you should be so far at um, this stage, if you started the master, like let's say, a year ago or more. If you just started a few months ago, then you're probably still at this stage. Good luck. <laughs> uh, so today we will focus on this one. Write about what you have done and how then to present it and hope it works. Um, also, I will give the PDF of the presentation afterwards, so don't worry. There's a lot of text and you don't have the time to read everything. We'll have all the time. I, I did on purpose a lot of writing, so then you can go back to it when you're writing your own pages. Um, okay, so first, what do you do? You think. You think hard. Um, you try not to freak out because it can go in many directions before going in the right one. You really need to have an idea of what you're about to do because if you just start not knowing really what's going to happen, then very quickly uh, you will end up in that end and you will be confused and not organized. So try to have an overall idea of what is your thesis about. Um, I don't think there's a real way to do it. Most people will say, write the methods and the discussion and the introduction at the end, it's easier. Some other will say, no, do the opposite. I don't believe there's a right way to do that. From one person to another, it can be very different. Uh, for instance, I did this version where I started with introduction, which is good because you can start very ahead of time before you have even results, it's all the theory. Um, for me, it was better because it gives me a good idea of where I'm going. But some people did need to be very straight to the data and the analysis, and then once they know what they found, then they can talk about why they found that. Just find your own way to do it. Uh, so then it's writing, rewriting, 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 and so on. Uh, it can take a long time. It depends also on the supervisor. Some supervisors are so picky that they will be just sending back the draft and they corrected something, then they corrected it again, even if it was their own correction before. So, yeah, the be best thing is be ahead of time, because it can take a lot of time, and you never know. Well, sometimes you have the opposite. A supervisor won't help you, and suddenly, three weeks before, you're supposed to submit your thesis. Oh, by the way, there's that much corrections, and then you screw it, so be in advance. Um, figures, it always takes longer than you think. Um, all the spell checking, give it two days at least. Uh, and also add, ask someone to read it. Not necessarily understand all the details of the science, but just read it. Is it fluid? Is it, does it make sense? Is it completely alien? Uh, that helps also. Okay, so step by step. Uh, for the front page, or flyleaf, there's no actually a rule of how to do this. I've never found a specification that that's how it should be. That's how I did it. It's an example of mine. Uh, it's based on another one. So there's some continuity. We all had our master. It works. So that's my suggestion. You can probably add a few things if you feel it, it should be okay. Uh, feel it. Uh, the logo is a good thing. If you don't know where to find them, it's right here. You have all the logo of the university, all the faculties, the center for neuroscience. Okay. Um, then, the abstract. Um, it's really important, the abstract. This is false, don't pay attention to that. Um, the abstract is probably one of the most important things in your thesis and in research in general because most of researchers uh, 
uh, that's the moment when they pay the most attention when they read something. So all the information, the important information should be there. Because they read, they will read the abstract, they will be okay, now I understand it, then we'll go through the rest and pay less attention. So really try to make something very good so that they, they're really focused. Um, at first, you identify why are you talking about this, why is it important? Um, like, start with something very broad, I don't know. Uh, people are not sleeping maybe because they drink too much coffee. Okay. Uh, the problem is then um, they drink coffee too late, so maybe we could do something to make them sleep better. Then what is the method? We try to have people drinking uh, real coffee, chocolate, and coffee flavored chocolate. And then we, we tested them and they went to sleep and we register how much amount of sleep they had. The main result? Well, it turns out uh, coffee is not chocolate, so it doesn't work well. But flavored coffee and chocolate works. Conclude, well, if we have uh, flavored coffee and chocolate, then maybe people will sleep more. You see? And then you have the whole idea of the research summarized and people know what you're talking about. Uh, that is usually better to write it at the end, when you're done with the whole thing, because it's more clear. It's, it's a summary, really. You don't, should not go into details. Um, it should not be extracted from the rest. Just write it from scratch. You start new sentences, you think about what you've done, and you ask your mom. Like, take your mom, still tell her, I will tell you about my research. What you told her should be mostly what is written in the abstract, but in a more scientific manner. Uh, Knowledgements. Uh, well, it's not mandatory, but you obviously didn't do this research by yourself, so you probably have someone to thank. Uh, here's an example of how to phrase it. You can go on Google and find many ways to phrase it. You can thank whoever you want, your guest if you want, and you feel you should thank it for all the petting that uh, happened and uh, the comforting. Uh, but usually you thank your supervisor, your lab mates, and, and so on. Uh, the table of contents. Uh, that's also an example from my master thesis. No much rules, just keep it simple. They will use it to go through your thesis, have an idea of how it is structured. It should be clear, simple, not too long. Don't have too many subcategories because that's really confusing usually. Um, abbreviations. If you have some, like a lot of them, maybe you should do a list at the beginning. I honestly, I didn't. I prefer the version where the first time I have a long word, I say it uh, completely and then I put the abbreviation in parentheses and then I go so on. That's what I did. Some people do a list at the beginning and then they start right away with the, the abbreviation. What do you think? Um, introduction. Now we're hitting the real matter. Uh, what is important is to hook the people. That's how they start. You are introducing your subject. You're doing a thesis, it's not an article, so you can be very broad about how you ended up studying this. You talk about life in general if you want. Uh, you can say this philosopher was talking about this and suddenly I had the idea of you can be broad. The idea is to funnel down from the very large subject and the matter that concerns everyone to why have you done this research specifically? Why this one? Like what's very good about it that someone else didn't do it? How did you come up with this idea? Um, you should give all the information that someone that is not a specialist in your subject should have to understand what's coming next. So that's why it's important to ask someone to read it. Usually someone that is in neuroscience but is not in your lab, that will be the perfect match. Um, I put an example of a structure. It's only an example, don't take my word for it. But a good way will be to introduce your field. If there are many theories that are fighting about the subject, introduce them, say someone says that, but there's someone else saying that. Um, and why this is very important and what makes you wonder about it. Uh, what kind of discoveries that happened lately, like the five, last five years of research in the field, what they found, and usually that's where your research comes from, because, oh, they found this, so now I'm wondering what can I do from that. Um, say a little bit about what you, you do as a, as a method, but not explaining the method, saying, like, I don't know, for example, you're using uh, functional connectivity, you then will say that uh, there is a technology using the EEG that 
uh, does an inverse solution into the dynamic of the brain, and then you can see how the brain regions are synchronized together. It's very broad, but you say what kind of technology you use, and the goal why you're doing this, what's the question you're addressing, what you're hoping to find at the end. Uh, methods. Okay, that's, that's a hard one. Um, it's really descriptive. Do not mention any results. You're just saying what you did and how. Like a very a guideline so that someone could maybe uh, that someone maybe could uh, reproduce the, the findings. How they would do like I don't know. You go to IKEA, you buy a, a library, then you have instruction on how to do it. It's the same. Very simple step by step. Um, usually you start with what you had as subject, mice, cells, depending on what kind of research you do. You explain the paradigm. If it's a cognitive study, then you say, we had the subject memorize this software, then we asked them, three minutes later. If it's uh, uh, mice, I don't know, you, we put them into a maze, they had to find cheese at the other hand, and you explain the paradigm, What's, what is it about? How did you acquire your data? Uh, EEG, if it's an EEG, for example, you say, what kind of EEG? Like, uh, it's by semi in uh, 2000, and, uh, uh, something rate, 500 hertz, uh, 128, every details. Even you say the brand and sometimes you add a link, a web link to the, the website. If it's for example a software you can download online, you say that's where I found the software. You have very really to say everything. And where it comes from, quote, from the research that happened to be before and developed those techniques. Uh, the analysis you did, uh, the stats that was related to this analysis, and then all the more second order details of your data, like uh, was there an age effect, uh, some external factors, you know, some complementary analysis you did to support your main results. Um, and brace yourself, it's the most boring part of the thesis, really. So, plus coffee. Results, very important also. They are descriptive, but in the sense of the result. You do not interpret them. You just say, I found that. You don't say why, you don't say what you think it means, you don't say what's related to, just you found that doing that. You don't only say, I found that. You say a bit more about it. That's why I put an example here of a possible sentence. Because you have to describe in which context what was done to do all that is related to the, to the, um, the result. Um, that's where also you should have your figures and uh, the little text that is under the figures that's very important. Name your figure, figure 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, whatever. But name them and refer to them in your text. You can see that da da da, apparently this is figure 1. Um, the units, don't forget the units, very important. And be coherent, consistent through your, it is always the same thing, uh, the names and all this. Um, yeah, the way it is presented is that even if you don't interpret them, you present the results clear enough that someone reads the results and starts thinking about what could it mean. So someone is reading it and says, hmm, I could interpret it that way or that way. So you do not help the interpretation, you just give the information to be interpreted. Then you do the work of interpreting in the form of a discussion. Uh, yes, lots of text. I won't go through this, you will read it by yourself. It's just um, questions you ask yourself before writing the discussion. <clears throat> it's my own recommendation. You can not do that if you want, and it's okay. But try answering all those questions in your head or written before. And if you have the answer to those questions, then you probably have all the material you need to write the discussion. Um, it's an essay. It's really presenting the pros and cons and how does it work together. In more details, there is no big limit, but less than five pages is not a real discussion. More than 15, it's going to be really boring. All that for uh, here's an example of how you can present things. Uh, yeah, at, at first, my, my supervisor told me, gave me an advice, it's usually when you write a thesis like this, or an article or anything, you should be able to go from the introduction to the discussion in one step without losing the, 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 thre the thread. The methods and the results are just in between to 
give you the data you're talking about and all the detailed information. It should be able to skip from the last sentence of the introduction to the first sentence of the discussion. It should be fluid. Okay, continue. If you feel that it does not make sense from one to the other, then there's probably a problem you should pick about. So, yeah, follow your introduction, recall what was it about, and uh, what you find in, in at first. Then, personal suggestion, say behavioral if it's not the main result. Okay, our subject did very good on the memory experiment. They had that result, and that's actually what we expected from them. Then, we actually did EEG to the subject, and that's what we found. So, uh, usually start with the most interesting and important because you don't want it to be. Some people would say, uh, "Oh, keep it for the end. It's like a big surprise, and you end up with the cherry on top of the cake." That's not how it works. It's better to just say first, "That's what I found. That's amazing." And then also, by the way, I found that, which is also great. But start with the most amazing thing you found. Um, so yeah found this, uh, previously this was found, I think it means this, and it's supported by all those research that were done in the last 10 years. Also in the same kind of result, there was this and this, and you know, you construct your argument saying, okay, I found this, this is known about it, I think it can mean that thing, and I'm true, probably true because all those people also find something that is related to that. You do that for all your results, arguments, and at the end you're like, okay, so I found all this. Those data, I found it for a specific reason, for the goal of my research. What does it mean then? How does it fit in the theory? How does it fit in the field? Do I support someone? Do I find something completely new and maybe should I win a prize for that? You should wrap it up. Uh, the last part of the discussion part is really putting all the arguments together in a meaningful way and related to the theory. Then, in the conclusion, which is kind of the second part of the discussion, but for a thesis you divide it because it's more clear, you will discuss more about the strengths, limits, and the bigger perspective. Uh, it should, should not be too long. The idea is, what is the most important? It's really coming back to the whole thing. What was very important that, what was weak in that, um, what's the message? It's, it's not the same as the abstract. It's not a shorter version of the discussion and tradition. It's really the message. A good advice is, if you would meet again then your supervisor in six months and ask them, remember you were jury on my thesis uh, presentation, what do you remember from it? What do you want them to answer about that? That should be in this part. Um, and yeah, the implication, what does it mean? What can we do with that? Can we save a thousand lives? Uh, can I get a new funding? It's not like this, but, but yeah, what's the meaning of that? What's the consequence of this finding? And then find a nice sentence because usually they like what you say. And uh, then, uh, Obviously, it is not enough, and we should uh, go deeper into the subject. But uh, at least uh, we found understand more about that, and it can be very useful for all the people concerned by this. You know, very better sentence. Reference, lots, lots of references. You never have enough. Uh, as an example, my thesis was very short; it was only 30 pages, and I had more than 60 references. You should count at least two or three references. By page of your thesis. Uh, not spread equally, of course. Um, you should cite everything, everything you talk about. You, that's not coming from you. If you say that's coming from someone else, use a quote. If you have a single author, double or multiple author, then there is a way to present this. Either only the name, both name, or name at all for the other ones. You probably recognize those authors. Um, the way to work the whole reference, there's a recommended way, but as you probably know, there are many standards way of quoting research. And by having many standards, it doesn't make them very standard. Uh, that's one I would recommend, but if you know another one that you prefer or you used to work with,
feel free to use it. Just be consistent all across your references, it should be all the same model of writing. If you put the name first, if you put the, the year after, or if you put it at the end, it should be the same across. That's very important. Um, obviously, they will not check all your references. They have all the things to do, but you never know. Uh, and the end, supplementary material. That's everything you cannot fit in the rest of the pieces. It's very complementary. You don't even put the number of the pages in that. It's just all the big data that you cannot make a nice figure about. Uh, if your analysis or your methods are very, very complicated with lots of steps, uh, I think, for example, when you do genetics, usually you have too many to put in the methods. That's where you put it. Um, yeah, if you have lots of equipments, yeah. Usually people just check that if they have some doubts about what happened in the methods and the results. So then they can check, like, understand better what you've done. Uh, usually it's for specialists, so if you have someone in the jury that's very specialist in the field, you probably want to have this. If no one knows about your methods, then you probably won't even look at it. So that was page by page what to do with your thesis. Overall, a thesis should be between 30 and 100 pages, there's no rule. Uh, ask your supervisor, because he will be the one reading it most, and probably he does not want to read 100 pages every time. Uh, same for your jury. I suggest not to do too much you doing science. In science, we want to be concise, to be very specific, to be clear. And maybe in art, master, you want to do 150 pages because you want to make a very nice sentence, say over one page the same idea. In science, you definitely don't want to do that. If you can say something in one sentence, then say it in one sentence. Don't try to do two sentences. Uh, it's actually you will. They will notice that because all your jury members are used to articles and it's like the fight to condense as possible your text to the smallest way and the less readable but still simplest and logical for them. Um, a few specifics, 12 points, font, times, New Roman, 1.5, complex details, but just follow that. That's the rule. I don't know why, that's how they want it. Uh, number for each page, one-sided pages. Yes, they are not very ecological, but that's how it's supposed to be. And um, not staples. You have a few places you can go to print your uh, report and bind it. You know, with this, uh, it's like a glue or a patch that they put on the side, so it looks like a book. Um, also, the circles, that's nice, but no staples. They don't like this. And be careful because you can easily miss some spaces. That actually your supervisor know nothing about. You should better ask uh, if you have some doubts. Ask uh, someone else from the master or uh, one of the or your faculty. But your supervisor, you know, knows how the uh, thesis looks like for a master thesis. Then you're done. You wrote everything. You're sure of yourself. The supervisor confirmed it. Good, because you've done most of it. But it's not all. Now we have different problems you have to face. It can be very complicated to reach from the part where you finish writing it to the part where you actually present it. You have to find a jury. Uh, you're supposed to find a jury, but technically it's your supervisor that decides for you. But if you don't ask him, he will not think about it, so be sure you ask your supervisor, by the way, I need a jury, who would you suggest? And you will find with him or who is the best in the field in Geneva or even from someone else, somewhere else if they want to, uh, to supervise it. Um, at least one must be a faculty member of University of Genève. So if you have people from Lausanne, for example, be sure at least there's one from uh, Genève. Usually you have your supervisor plus two other jury members. You can have four. Five, that's more for a PhD jury. And also they should be from two different institutions. Yeah, Bachelors in New Science, Psychology, and all the other ones. Be sure they're from different, ask them. Where they relate to. We are lucky in a way because a lot of them are at the same time in science, medicine, HUG, CME, so you can pick which one you want, it works. Then, you have your jury. You need to have a moment where all of them are available at the same time. Good luck with that too, but usually it's during the summer, which is very hard because they go on holiday. 
Um, also, when you know your data approximately, consider that you have to give your thesis in the written form two weeks before you present it. It's actually good to decide this in advance so it makes you a deadline on when is the last limit for you to finish writing because you will never finish writing it on the other hand. Um, also, it's up to you to book a room. You have rooms everywhere in this university. Just find one that suits you. You have to tell Monastiridon Monas and your faculty, the secretary, you tell them, yes, I finished my master, I will present in uh, two or three weeks. What should I do now? It's very specific from a faculty to another. Especially in psychology, it's very complicated. Uh, also, you have some requirements to have your master. Make sure you fulfill them before you end, because it will be very sad to present yourself as a secretary and, oh, sorry, you missed that, you have to wait a few more months before having your master. So, that's in the, the website usually, so you can check it up again, but basically credits, seminar sheet, uh, the internship, um, having presented your work in your lab. Be careful, because people can tend to forget that. It's part of it, it's required. Then, a special moment with your country jury. Try to enjoy it. You will present for 30 minutes, and then they will ask you questions for 30 more minutes. It's not supposed to be the same as your written thesis. They read it, probably are fed up of reading it, reading it. Uh, try to be a little bit different in the way you present this. Obviously you're talking about the same thing, but try to be a bit different, to focus more on the results. That's what I found. Look, it's amazing, because it means that. And that's the methods I use, and it's very new method, so you should be excited about it. Like, find a way to present it that is less focused on the details of how you did it and why is it important. If you're a French speaker, you can do it in French. If you're English, not necessarily native, but if you're more comfortable in English, you can do it in English. You are free to ask it. Just make sure that your jury members understand the language you're presenting it. It's usually better if they understand it. Uh, if you really want to do it in French or English, but your jury members don't understand one of the two languages, maybe find a new one. And don't forget this. Because if you don't have this, you don't have a grade. It's the official report. They have to fill uh, your name, the grade of the presentation, the written report, and all this, the sign. And then you come with this paper to the secretariat. And congratulations, you have your master. So don't forget it. Who gives this um, sheet? Sorry? Where do you get this sheet? Does Mona? Um, um, when I was doing my master, it was this, how is it called, Dokeos thing, which is replaced now by something else. Okay, so I guess. So you have supposedly a space for the master on this, and there are all the documentation with the seminar sheet, the regulation, and all this. This document should be there. If it's not, I have it from last year, I can send it to you. Just ask. Um, evaluation there is the content and the format. Both important. So, in the content, is your question and your goal clear? When you started your presentation, were you clear enough to explain why are you doing all this? Why your members should be <coughs> sitting here and listening to you? That's very important. You should start with this. Um, how much scientific knowledge did you bring? Were you presenting for a class of eight years old or for a scientific members? It's very important to be accurate in the way you speak about science. Your methods. Uh, don't say, I did that because my supervisor asked me to do it this way. Obviously, there's another reason. You might not understand it yet. I spent a year and a half not knowing why I was doing that, but just because I was asked to. Then I asked my supervisor, by the way, why is it this method and not another one? I talked about it for an hour, then I knew, then I could explain it. Be sure to be able to answer to all the questions uh, about the methods. Uh, is your data accurate and reproducible, or are you finding something like, yeah, I found this, but no one can confirm it because it's a very special experiment. That's not science. Um, is it relevant, what you say about this? Is it, does it fit the theory, or are you completely out of the site? By the way, if your results are completely out of the field and completely wrong, it's okay. You can have a master by doing a research that leads nowhere. If you did it well. I'm not sure if that's clear. You can fail, but fail, fail well. You're only a master student. 
they don't expect you to find something new, to write an article about it. If you do it right, well, that's research also. Sometimes you don't find anything. And one year and a half, two years, it's very short to find something. So it happens. Maybe you didn't find anything. Just explain why. The possible reasons. Uh, the rats were too fat. Uh, I didn't have the material. Uh, my supervisor went on holiday. Uh, whatever. Find a reason and a good reason. For the format, uh, it's uh, maybe stupid to say, but the presentation, how it looks like, is very important. Make it pretty. People listen more when it's pretty. Grammar, spelling, wording. You cannot fail because of the language if you don't speak French or English enough. But it's better not to make too much mistakes, especially when it's written, because you can always ask someone to correct for you. So you will not fail for that, but you will lose points. You probably want a master's thesis with five or six at the end rather than four, only because of the spelling that you could have corrected with someone else. And are you coherent, understandable when you present, or are you going from one point to another and then back to the result and the introduction? Just be okay. clear. Uh, it's possible that it's not enough. Sorry, it can happen. Uh, that means you have less than four. You have the right to do it again. Once. So be sure if you do it again that you do it right this time. Uh, you have uh, maybe two or three weeks to do that. Uh, yeah, as I said before. Okay, you're done. Great. Well, it's not over yet. First, enjoy it a little bit. But then, if you really want your master, then you have more administration stuff to do. Um, that's where it gets very different from a faculty to another. I know for science, I don't know for psychology, I just read about it. So, check it out. Uh, I can tell you that for science it's easy, you go to monasteridon.org, you secretaria, you give the uh, official report, the thing that they sign with the grade, all the documents that prove that you have your credits, that you have your uh, internship, you have your seminar sheet, all this, you come to the secretaria, you give it to them, you write something on your computer, congratulations, you have your master. That's simple. And a printed version of your thesis is good to give to Mona because she likes to keep archives of this, but it's not monetary. Psychology, it's way more complicated. You have a digital version, you have the first page, then you have a few more documents, you have to register to something at the library. I don't get it. Not psychology students, sorry. But it's all explained online, or just ask someone else in psychology how to do it. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Then you're done. A few tips to go further. Think ahead. It's long, it's complicated. Sometimes you are very helped by your supervisor, sometimes you're not. That's how it is. So just make sure you're organized, you know where you're going. You give yourself deadlines, you know that in a month I should be done doing this, and then the next month this, it's helps. Read lots, lots of articles. It's boring. You can only read the abstract introduction and discussion if you want. But read them. Know what it's about. Know your field, know the literature, know the, the strengths, the, the weakness, what the other did. It really helps you. And also the structure. A thesis is an article-like structure. Bigger, but still the same. So it really helps you write in your thesis. Ask for help. If you don't know, you don't understand, ask. Don't stay yourself. Don't think that you're the best and you can do it by yourself because that's the best chance to fail. Just being too proud to ask questions. It's okay. If you don't know, you're there to learn. Probably plenty of people in your lab that are very happy to help you. A PhD student, a postdoc, a supervisor, a friend. Whatever, ask for help if you need. Um, explain everything. Never assume that, uh, that for me it's clear, it's obvious, that it's necessarily obvious for someone else. Some things are very obvious for us, but only in our field. We don't know for other people. So if you feel that something is probably a bit further, further just go through the basis. You never say enough, as long as you don't repeat yourself. Um, yeah, as I said also before, science, not literature. Do short. Short can be better. Um, I, I had this problem first when I started writing big sentences and it was very nicely written and my supervisor told me like, yeah, if you want to write a novel, good, you're in a good way, but you're not writing a novel, you're writing a thesis. And it's true, they don't care about nice wording, writing metaphors and stuff like this. They want you to go straight to the point. So try to keep that in mind. And the figures. Nice figures, it's, a, it's better than uh, five pages of methodology and, figure, uh, and the results. 
a result can express everything about your data. If it's nicely done and it's comprehensible, someone can just look at this figure and understand everything about the research. Some very great paper, if you read them, you just only look at the, read the introduction, look at the, 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 the results, and that's it. So apply yourself to this. And good luck. If you have any questions, let's go. Maybe I have one. What about like the deadlines? If I want to finish like in January in three semesters, yes. What is like the deadline? When do I have to like before which day do I have to be um, Basically, um, for example. Uh, the sem new semester starts mid-September or so. As long as it's before mid-September, you would be graduating from this spring semester. Don't do it the day before because it takes time for the administration. But if, for example, if the school starts on, I don't know, the 15th, come on the 5th or the 3rd to the second time to give your documents, it's enough to be graduating for spring. If you wait too long, then you will, have, will be done, but you will not officially receive your diploma until six months. But they can give you a paper saying that, yes, you're done. You don't have the official diploma, so you're not actually stuck because you can still apply to other universities and stuff like this. You just don't have the real paper in your hand. Yes, okay. So before the new semester starts? Yeah. Take, I don't know, like, two weeks before the yes. semester starts. Okay. Then you're First of all, congratulations. It yes. was very nice. And for me, really happy that we were classmates and now you graduated, you're in PhD, and you transfer all this knowledge to, to a new master's student. So I hope I'll be in your position. In that. And maybe some of you next year will be doing this presentation. Exactly. That's why I'm saying this. Uh, but let, let me ask you about tips. Now, uh, did you use uh, EndNote or Mendeley? Uh, beforehand, when you were uh, at, at taking all the articles? No, I should have because it's very convenient and loads of stuff like this. I didn't because I didn't know how to use it, uh, didn't have the time to ask someone. Or I was lazy about that. That was missing. Maybe Don't do that. But it's true that as long as you take the time to enter everything in EndNote, then one click and all your quoting is perfectly nicely well organized and it saves time. Uh, it's easier to do it manually if you do it only once, but the problem is you don't do it only once and you probably change a lot of the quotes and the citation and the paper, so and that's easy to Then maybe I can help by, by offering my experience. I didn't know about EndNote and Mendeley. Uh, someone said that uh, from another university that uh, open an account in Mendeley and you can put your professor in a group. So your group, you, your professor, or somebody else. So you upload there the, the articles that you prepared for your thesis, and immediately he can have access to what you upload and he proposes articles. So all your articles are there, and when you're ready to do what Rafael did with the table of contents and all that, just click transfer cited APA, and it all goes to, so you don't have to write a 60. This is, I didn't know it, they told me, I'm sharing with you because I'm doing it with my supervisor. It's very nice. So and what's it's, the website called? It's uh, EndNote. Most people have EndNote when they use Apple. Mm -hmm. I, I don't use Apple computers, so I have Mendeley. So you can put three people only by their address. Uh, so like easily yeah, you cannot download it. Mendeley.com or EndNote.com. And the other one that I wanted to ask you, Rafa, uh, because I didn't, I didn't go into the jury thing yet. I mean, I mean, to the thesis. Uh, you said about uh, if they give you uh, under four, you have to do it again. Blah blah blah. Your uh, supervisor probably will not give you four because he knows the the work beforehand, right? It can happen, but then you really should send your supervisor. I've heard about supervisor not very being not being very supportive to master students. If you have a good relationship with your supervisor, you're going to be fine. I didn't expect that. Because he, he's monitoring you at the last minute, and then the last minute he says, no, that's good, that's not good, it's his fault too. 
Anyway, let, let, let's say that they are average good people. My supervisor, we tried questions before and he asked, really asked me the same question during the presentation, so I had good answers but that I already knew the answer. I, I want That's to ask how supervisor you, is really supposed to help you. I want to ask you how can we minimize that? Is it possible and legal that we can send three, four, one month ago the, the thesis, the final draft, to the, net, to the two juries uh, 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 apart from our supervisor and ask for advice. So let's say I, I picked a, a professor in the jury and, yeah. and I say I'm going to present in one month. Can you, do you have any corrections because I don't want to fail in the presentation? Is it, no. legal? Is it okay? Is it legal? I don't know anything about legal stuff about that. I don't see a problem. I, the main problem I would see is that the, the jury member would not be very viable to read that. Yeah in his free time to read it then again two months later and he would probably did, if you do that read it once when it's not finished and when you send it again finished he will be oh I already know about that and only remember the unfinished version. Because usually usually the jury member will be people like Patrick, Christophe Michel, people like very, very busy. Mm. Because you know, I, I, I heard I heard about jury members that they are postdocs, it's it's allowed to be a postdoc. Yes. As long as it's faculty member. Faculty member. If they have a status like a, I don't know, enseignant or whatever, like for example, a PhD would not suit because they're not faculty member, they're just PhD. Postdoc, ah, right? It, even some postdocs don't have a faculty title. Mm. Ask them. And did you ask about, uh, did you ever thought about uh, turning it into, into an article? What? T turning your thesis into an article? No, I'm writing it right now. So you just ah you you're doing it uh, you're continuing this in a PhD yeah. to to be an article right yeah. to be put okay right. but that's usually up to your supervisor to suggest to you that by the way that was good it might be great for an article you can suggest and ask but it will be a supervisor's decision okay thank if you if it's an article they want you to publish because they want more because they want that's why I'm asking yeah what is happening with so if if your if your thesis is Good enough, they will tell you. You know, if you stay a little, little bit longer, you can do an article. So, mm -hmm. do you want? Up to you. Thank you. And just some, sometimes it's not your supervisor who will uh, choose your jury, it can be your PI. It depends on the lab. But uh, all the dates and all the like that. Yeah. In my lab, I don't think I will have my supervisor manager. Could be my PI and two others. In, in the jury, he will not be supervisor. He will be the PI. Okay. Right. Well, I have the PI, the supervisor, and other people. So there's no big rule about that. I think they care more about having them from different faculty and being faculty member than the rest. For the rest, really, it's not very regulated. The feeling I had is if you know the people enough, you can do whatever you want. Them. It's just a agreement between people. It's so small. It's this world of neuroscience, especially in the master level, it's like family. You know the people, then you're fine. So don't be very scared. Like if you choose well the jury members and you have a good relationship with supervisor, you cannot fail. They're there to help you. Just be sure to ask all the right questions before. Promise in two years you come back to tell us what is happening with the PhD. Okay, how to write how a PhD? PhD? How to write a PhD? This, <laughs> huh? okay. I hope that was success. As I said, last year. Any other question, or was it clear that everything about how to write a PhD?